this? Francis. Francis. Hi. Another up and coming leader. Well, you're hooking up a dog team and all the excitement's there, getting ready to, to venture out into the wilderness. All the preparation comes to the moment where you cut them loose and all the worries of the world disappear and you could just focus on the trail ahead of you and the moment. Live here and now. Uh, I'm John Fowler, California native. Been in Alaska almost 35 years now. This is my home, 10 acres. Squirrel Creek Kennel is what I call it. Uh, running a business, Chugach Outfitters has provided food and care for the animals for over 20 years. Uh, we're, we're currently doing tours mainly in the summer with cruise guests, but uh, we will uh, work with the local schools and skiing groups. Anybody that wants to experience dog mushing, we'll take them out. We, we currently have 12 Alaskan Huskies. The only qualification to be an Alaskan Husky is be born here, but it goes a little deeper than that. These are the same dogs we've been using for dog sledding for a long, long time. It's two of my leaders, and Tonsina is mother of all the puppies you're looking at. She is 12 years old and probably one of the most splendid dogs I've ever had the privilege of working with. She just does everything. I expect before I ask and shows me how to teach all the other dogs in that motherly way. She's really a leader in the pack, in the team, and everyday life. Okay, Tony is a camera ham here as you can see, but Liliana and Tickle are sisters. They uh, seem to argue about who gets to eat first, so that's why it's an advantage to separate them and let them eat alone. But uh, after they're done eating, I let them decide who wants to be with each other for a bit of time. Flutina is nicknamed Koo, or Cuckoo. <laughs> because she's really got a thing for biting cameras. I don't know what it is, the noise they make or something, but uh, she's just got to get a piece of a camera. <laughs> and uh, Candic is father of all the puppies, but really loves to play with his daughters. This is my old man, 12 years old. Hi. Fran is jealous every time I pet a dog. You have to allow dogs to work out their differences and be a little uh, disagreeing sometimes. Otherwise, it gets pent up and it comes out in a violent fight. So the more I let them verbally argue, uh, the less uh, physical problems I see. After we're done feeding, 
I bring the dogs that cooperate back together. Quartz and her brother Bernard. Hi. Bernard is Yenna's favorite, my handler from Czech Republic. And uh, well, Bernard's possessive of his bowl, so when he's done eating, he defends it with everything he's worth. Good boy. And he tries to wipe all the food off his nose onto me. So right now we're working on keeping, keeping his nose and his manners to himself. Good boy. It's my little sweetheart. Really shy, passive, but she has taught me to slow down, make a dog a priority instead of my agenda and what I expect. Consider what she expects and what makes her happy. I'm pretty curious, so if you give her time, she'll good there was that response I'm talking about she's listening yes when I talk about her she agrees with me I think uh, a friend of mine John uh, taught me that his dogs responded to his requests or questions with a lick of the lip and it's also known that a dog is relieving stress when it yawns. <sighs> Same with people. So I get acknowledgement of a question when she does this. Good girl. You know, I could do a lot of communication with these dogs non-verbally, just through gestures and body language. It's the main communication tool that a pack animal uses. It's its body language and expression through movement and posturing. Quartz is classic in uh, her respectful movements. She's not licking me in the face. She just wants to come close and say, I'd like to give you a kiss, but she knows I don't want her to. <laughs> Good girl. Well, Frances has a job of defending her territory. She has now run off several moose all the way down to the highway a half a mile away. Ferocious little dog but size means nothing to most dogs. They are as huge as they think they are. His sister Grayling. Hi, hon. You might notice me always striving to get the dogs four feet on the ground. I don't want them jumping up every time they get greeted. Most people find that offensive. 30 years ago, I moved to Alaska with one dog. Her name was Kuna. And uh, she was already 10 years old and I learned how to harness work her with a friend in Colorado, Steamboat Springs. And uh, when I moved up here with her, I told her that's the last time I'm gonna move you across the world. When I began relationships with dogs, they were, they were strays or they were the neighbor's dog that came to visit me as a child. And I just felt privileged that a dog liked me. I, I felt like a good person if the dog trusted me. So I discovered they liked cheese and I thought I was the smartest dog trainer in the world. And they started working with me and, and developing this bond that I couldn't get enough of. So I had one dog in, in my childhood and for whatever reason, I, I lost that dog or, or moved or something and got another dog and then you know, three or four dogs later in my life, I met a dog musher who had several dogs. 
I just went, wow, this is, this is dogs. He gave me Kuna, the dog I came up here with. She taught me how to harness work her and develop such a relationship after 20 years, you can imagine, it's one of the closest friends I've ever had. So that wasn't achieved at that level until I spent a great deal of time with the animal. So they got old. Well, as I'm getting older, I'm appreciating what it takes to get here and even more appreciating what it took 12 years of those dogs to get to this point. They've respected me because I've respected them. They've trusted me. They are a product of my skills and ability to provide health. So I gained a lot of pride in my dogs. To find motivation to get out of bed every day, to be active, physically active, and cover some miles in a day, and care for an animal that needs you and, and shows you that you know how to be compassionate and make a plan and provide a, a lifestyle is really a lot of the reason that motivates me to live. <laughs>